The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 13th, the uh, terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, D.B. Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, well, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it early, steve at tfnn.com. In that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question and in our Tigers, then, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices trading higher. The Dow's up 404 points, one and a quarter percent. S&P 43, a little over 1%. NASDAQ 100 up 7 tenths of a percent, 87 points. Russell is up 6 tenths of a percent. Semis are up 1.1%. Trannies are up 1 and 6 tenths. That's 250 points. New York Stock Exchange up. So all they're all up. Uh, spot volatility index is down by minus 13%. So the way that that volatility index works is when we have closes that are above a Rate of change greater than plus 10%. We usually see a bouncer bottom in the marketplace, very much like we've seen for the last three days. Only it took three days to take hold. If the spot volatility closes below minus 10%, with that signals, that's an initiation move to higher price. So you're certainly going to want to keep your eye on that. If we take a look at what's leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, we've got Lamb Research, LRCX up 25 bucks. Four and a half percent. Google's up 20. BlackRock's up 18. Azimil Holdings up 15. To the downside, MicroStrategy, 48 bucks or 9 percent. Shopify, 39 to 3 percent. Mercado Libre, 24, nearly 2 percent. Coinbase down 19. Wix is up 16 point Arunis. But I suppose you would like to know what is going on in the marketplace. So we're going to explain it a couple of different ways by taking a look at first the daily time frame charts, and then we'll drill down into the into the 30 minute charts because they're really pointing the uh, picture in the way for the rest of the day. So we can begin by taking a look at the daily time frame charts out here. Let's get these white background charts rolling. I think we should have it. Nope, I got the 30 minute charts. I will come back to those. Hold on a minute here. Let me go back to this one. This should be it. There we go. So let's take a look at the daily time frame. What do we know? When we take a look at the ES mini. What we don't know. Well, what we don't, what the ES Mini does not show us on this daily time frame chart is price being back to any level of support. So, when just taking a look at this, you've got a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator top. You've got wave number seven. You've got price uh, below the bottom of its daily profile, even though it's not shown here. All this would look like price wants to head to 38.43. If you caught the market update, what you actually noticed was that the ES Mini made its way back to its weekly bottom of its profile. So it really is at a level of support. It's back above that level right now. So that's important to understand. Where is support? Where is resistance? Why is that important? If you take a look at the NQ, this formed a TD9 count. It did it. It's doing it today. The, the bar number nine formed yesterday. We've seen a little bit lower low interest session out here. And whatever that today's low is, as long as price doesn't close below it, then this remains a bullish pattern. Now, what should unfold out here, even if this is just a counter trend move, is price should make its way up to its oscillator and change line. And that's at 13,547. So the NQ 
is suggesting to you and I it has bottomed, or at least there's a counter trend rally, should make its way to 13,546. Now, that number, 13,546, is going to change as price moves up or price moves down. If you take a look at the Dow, the Dow pulled all the way back to its breakout area. If you're wondering where the buy the blanking dipsters should reside, it was right there, 33,227. If there's one thing Tom taught me, the very first thing he taught me, is you don't have to buy a stock that's breaking out. You can wait till it pulls back to the breakout area. The beauty of the TD9 count is you now have an objective way of measuring where that breakout level is. And on the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, one guarantee that I can give to you, there's the only guarantee that I can give you, well, I'll give you two guarantees. I'm going to give you my best. So that's the first guarantee. The second guarantee is nobody. And I mean nobody, nobody with inside the TNN fam, TFNN family would have chosen 33,227 as the breakout area. Now, that's really important because the technicians that we're surrounded with are amazing. So what you want to do is you want to understand this pattern. You can easily understand it. If you don't know it, you can subscribe to Mastering Probability. You can do it for 29 days. It doesn't cost you anything. What it will cost you is not knowing this pattern. So here's what we can conclude. At this stage here, the Dow pulled back to where it should, the breakout level. It's bounced off of that. And where is it headed to? Exactly. You've got this whole figured out. It's headed to the oscillator and change line. Another tool that I teach you, it is not a moving average. You cannot replicate it. Well, you can because I teach how to replicate it. Again, that's another workshop that's available if you're a subscriber to Mastering Probability. So the Dow's bottom, the ES has hit a bottom, the bottom of its weekly, even though it's not shown here, the NQ, a TD9 count, and now the Russell 2000 also has a TD9 count. Now, the cool thing about that pattern is that both for the NQ and the Russell 2000, if price closes below today's lows, whatever they end up being, that gives us a big message as to where price is headed to. It would be headed down to its next level of support. Well, in the NQ, it's really not that much further. It's down to the 12,776 area. Inside the Russell 2000, it's a big problem because that's at 1940.50. And so that's a fairly sizable move to the downside. Is that what we're saying is going to happen? The move to the downside? Not right now, because right now, the suggestion is, based upon the charts that we're looking at and based upon the 30-minute charts that we're going to go look at, is that price wants to move higher. And that move higher are those oscillator and change line levels when we take a look at the daily time frame. Okay, so we've got the daily under control, or I think we do. Let's go take a look at the 30-minute time frame charts. So 30 minute time frame charts really tell the picture of what these markets are doing here. One of the patterns that we look at to identify tops or bottoms, roads momentum indicator signals, those are those diagonal lines that you see on my screen out here. And starting with the ES mini, we can see that early this morning, an, a roads momentum indicator signal formed. We had that nice hammer candle out here. Price was able to cruise through two TD9 breakdown levels. That's a beautiful thing. Now, we don't have any kind of a top in place in the 30-minute chart for the ES Mini. Price should target um, 41.36.50, but it really has a date with that oscillator and change line. When that line changes colors from red to green or from green to red, it tells us about an eventual hookup of price in that line. So that's what should see take place over the next um, hour or so. And if it's a test and rejection out there, that would be a bullish signal. As we move down to the Dow, so we'll go from top to bottom here. The Dow also formed a nice road momentum indicator signal. Does that at 5 o'clock this morning. Nice bullish hammer followed up by a bull sash candle. No topping pattern out here. Just the change in color in that oscillator and change line. So we get back from this break. The NQ right now is giving us the bullish test of that oscillator and change line. And that suggests we might be seeing an A to B equals CD to the upside form on the 30 minute chart. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's see, I'm on the wrong chart here. We're on the daily. Let me get back to those uh, half-hour charts out here and uh, make sure that we take a look at that. So what I want you to really notice here is going to be the uh, is the NQ. The NQ is, is, is likely what is powering this market either higher or lower. I mean, the Dow certainly. But here's what I want you to take a look at. So the NQ this morning forms a nice road momentum indicator bottom. We've got that nice little hammer candle out here. Price was able to get above the top of its daily profile. It does that by about 730 or so and goes ahead and makes a TD9 count. Now, makes a TD9 count right where it should have. So if the market is bearish directionally speaking out here then the high for the day is in and that's still a possibility but let's take a look at what also unfolded here so you've got that nice td9 count right at td9 count resistance 13 to 31 50. but what we also notice is that bar nine is forming bar nine the bar following nine that oscillator and change line moves from red to green and now what we're seeing is we're seeing the test of that oscillator and change line now right now in the last few minutes we're seeing price dip below it 13.083, but this bar doesn't complete until 1.30. So we really need to let the next 11 minutes play out here. But if price does close below the bottom of its profile and its oscillator and change line, then it's signal to us is that price should make its way back or could make its way back to the 12.936 level. If price can close above these areas, then that could be setting up an A to B equals CD to the upside. So the same pattern or similar pattern really in the Russell 2000. The difference here is Russell 2000 doesn't have a green oscillator and change line. That tells us the asset and change line for its 30 minute time frame is still below zero so with price being below that that's really a bearish signal out here but still the same kind of thing going on what i think is taking place is on these 30 minute charts here and the the the, the additional price pressure we're seeing inside the nq could be nothing more than waiting for the es and the ym to complete their test so that is a possibility if this is an a to b equals cd to the ups uh, upside out here 
Let's go take a look at where that price projection area would be. And this is for the NQ. So now we're looking at a 30 minute time frame chart. On that 30 minute time frame chart, depending on where the low is, uh, would give us a forecast that would take us up really to the prior highs. Now, the prior highs being the uh, area that we were at at about three o'clock, uh, two o'clock yesterday afternoon. And that's in the 13, 359 ish type area out there. So that is one possibility. Of course, I can give you a lot of possibilities, right, of what's going on inside the uh, marketplace. And it's a 30 minute chart that if, if it's me, which it is me. Uh, for my trading, that's where I am focused right now and looking for those signals. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the general market and what's going on there. There is a question that has come in, and I want to get behind on these. We didn't get uh, hardly any yesterday, only one so far today, which is totally cool, especially with these markets as crazy as they are. There's plenty for us to go take a look at, but certainly I would love to hear from you. Uh, and let's go take a look at, and the U right now is going to be, I believe it's Tim. So I'm just trying to get my charts here set up, get over to where I need to be and Tim writes in and is looking for looking to get into shop SHOP I believe that is Shopify where would be a good entry point so let's get our three time frame charts up on our screen here daily weekly monthly SHOP again is the ticker symbol that we're exploring Shopify and right now this is trading below and it has been for the last several days below the bottom of its daily profile it's also back in, it's also, I'm going to get rid of these consolidations. Shopify wasn't a consolidation. It made its measured move. So we don't really need those yellow rectangles any longer. What we do see out here, Tim, is that price is testing the bottom of its weekly profile. Of course, it doesn't end till tomorrow. But a close below 1053.85 would say, well, this has, is going to lower price. And so right now, as of 122 in the afternoon, you're looking for a potential buy area. And just simply from a profile standpoint, that number is going to be 971.47. Now, not to be too exact out here, but 971.47 is the number where Shopify is likely headed to. Let's go look at our other charts out here. The other charts are white background charts. See if I can pull this over. We can't. Okay, still working. And on the daily time frame, do we have any kind of a bottom signal? Well, Tim... If we can get to a lower low today, and what Stevie means by a lower low, I mean below 1031.75, then you're going to have a TD9 count bottom. Now, you prefer to have those TD9 count bottoms above TD9 breakout support. We don't have that in this. Well, we don't have a TD9 count yet, but it could be today or it could be tomorrow. As long as price today or tomorrow flushes below, trades below 1031.75, you will then have that pattern. And you have that pattern in a place where we've seen prior support. There was a hammer candle back in this range back on March 5th. Um, there was another swing point that formed back on March 26th. So you're kind of in the zone out here. So how would you take the trade if you do get that nine count? What you would do or what I would recommend that you do is go to the short term time frames. Now, you can start with a 15, go to 15, 30, 65 and so forth. And what you're looking for there is some kind of bottoming signal. Well, it just so happens right now on the 15 minute basis, there's a road's momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. That needs a bullish reversal candle. Again, you'd be looking for that at that time. I'm not suggesting that you do that just yet. You would do the same thing on a 30-minute chart. You'd do it on the 65-minute. What you're looking for, oh, I just deleted that. That was a nice move there. They got to move those X's someplace else. Here's your 130-minute chart. So that's what you would be doing. So the daily time frame chart out here shows the potential for a TD9 count but you've got to get through the low from two days ago. That could take place today or tomorrow. And then you'd look at the short-term time frames for some type of bottom signal in Shopify. And we just don't have it as we speak right now. So I hope that helps you out, Tim. Thanks so much for writing in. And I look forward to speaking to you again or speaking with you again, even though we did it via email out here. Okay, no other questions that we've got inside the uh, by email. Nothing that I have inside of Tiger's Den. I don't believe. Yeah, I don't see anything there. So let's just continue to uh, surf the markets. Here's the daily profiles, weekly profiles for the uh, four different futures contracts out here. So you can see the ES mini and you can see that 40, 80, 25, a key area. In the case of the Dow, what the Dow did is really what the ES mini did here. The Dow was able to make its way all the way back to the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. So Ruby and the Tiger's Den. I would absolutely change to bearish if come tomorrow we have closes below the bottom of those weekly profiles, regardless of what today does. But that would most certainly be a signal, even though you need two weekly closes. But that would be a signal that the markets do have a change in trend and that the markets could move lower into the end of June. 
Short of that happening, what more likely is the case is we're likely to see some kind of uh, bounce. It could be a one or two week bounce out there. Uh, before it sets the typical sell in May cycle that takes us lower into June. So we want to pay attention to these profile levels. We certainly want to pay attention to what's going on on the 30-minute time frame chart to help us gauge what's going on. Now, the Dow Equity Future contract gets down, tests and rejects, and it's back inside its daily profile right now. And so today, if this can close above, let's get you the number out here, if it can close above 33.788, it's back in its bullish ways with resistance in the 34.144 to 34.327 range out here. Uh, earlier in the day, the Russell 2000 was the leader stage in a real nice uh, comeback. We've already taken a look at the TD9 count bottom that it has, and it has an A to B equal CD to the downside. doesn't have a bullish reversal candle now. It did earlier so if we can get back up to those highs that would be confirming a buy the d point so that's what's going on we take a look at the equity futures contracts let's go look at that spot volatility index well that's not the one we were looking for let's go take a look at the new york stock exchange yesterday we talked about how prices got down into that extreme oversold condition area it did that by closing at a minus 22006 so that oversold condition has to be uh, worked off now there's a couple of different ways for it to do it um, and we can discuss that when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
stock exchange. I was mentioning there's really two ways to make a bottom when that advanced decline oscillator gets down into that oversold level. The oversold level is minus 150. We got down to minus 220 um, yesterday. If we just simply go from uh, backwards, you'll go from where we're at right now. If we take a look at the last couple of times uh, that the uh, advanced decline oscillator got down to the minus 150 level, the last time, most recent was on March the 24th. And what we saw here is price just simply moved out of there, moved out of that oversold level, got almost up to the overbought condition, which would be plus 150. It didn't. Another time where we take a look at how a bottom can form, and that comes back to the prior time period, the prior time period being January, the end of January out here, we can see that the New York Stock Exchange can go on and make a lower low. That's that red diagonal line in the top portion of my screen, where the advanced decline oscillator makes a higher low. So you get that kind of diverging pattern out here. And when you get down to this minus 150, it can be either of those that would set the bottom. I wish I could identify which one this was going to be, if this in fact is going to be one of those. And it appears that it is at this stage of the game. I don't. But those would be the two different ways. So right now, we've got to go with the premise, and we've got to watch those, that 30-minute chart. Uh, those 30-minute charts should be able to give us some clues as to what the market's intentions are. But this is the message right now coming from the New York Stock Exchange. That spot volatility index, just trying to put that together as well. Um, if it can get back below, so we've already talked about the one-day rate of change. Right now, the rate of change is below minus 10%. When you get below minus 10%, well, actually, I go back to this chart here, and you can take a look at the green arrows. The green arrows are those initiation moves out here. Those green arrows are representative of time periods where the spot volatility had a rate of change below minus 10% out there. So that's why we pay attention to that. The other level to be watching for the spot volatility is 2242. If price can get below that, that would be a real signal that price should move back to 1997. And that's a 50-day expense moving out. So that 1997 level is going to change up and down as price moves out there. So we've got that. Let's go to a couple of questions that have come in. Again, we don't want to get behind. So uh, the first question coming in from uh, Jerry. And Jerry wants to take a look at two different symbols, uh, G Goldfields, GFI, and CDE. So let's take a look at uh, Goldfields first. GFI is the uh, ticker symbol out there. And uh, we can see that it is trading at uh, 1065 above the daily, above the weekly, and above the monthly profile. So GFI, gold fields out here, uh, looks very bullish. You're looking for an entry point. Let's pull back the curtain, take a look at what's going on on our white background charts. Not much. A An entry area on a pullback here, Jerry, I'd have to say right now would be the oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 1027, so approximately 1027. I can give you a better figure, 1013, which is the top of the daily profile. And as long as price pulls back, tests that, and rejects that, that would be an entry point. If price gets inside there, then your entry point would really be between 975 and 984. I don't have any indication as we speak right now, that that's what price wants to do, 975 to 984. But if price did close below 1013, that would be its message. But right now from the daily time frame, it would be a pullback in that oscillator and change line. If that takes place, that would be your entry point. If I look at the weekly time frame here for gold fields, what do we have? We already discussed how price is trading above the top of its profile, so that's bullish. It's above the top of a green oscillator and change line. This, over the long haul, says it wants to go target the 1213 area. That's the TD9 breakdown level. On a 30-minute basis, you've really got a uh, Rose Momentum indicator top and then a TD9 count top. Uh, and that and that's was a lower high out here. So don't have the 30 minute chart is just really so, uh, showing us more signs of a consolidation than it is anything else at the moment here. The ideal entry point would be at 1044. That's a TD9 breakout level. So at this stage here, Jerry, I think you should hold off anyways. Wait to see if price is pulling back towards that oscillator and change line or that 1013 to 1027 level. And then you'd really like to see what's going on on the 30 minute time frame chart. So I hope that helps you out with regard to gold fields. GFI is the ticker symbol. Your second instrument that you want to look at is CDE. And that's core to lane out here. And CDE, core, or core mining. And right now, this is trading below the top of its daily profile. The top is 898. You're trading at 871. You're with inside the bullish structured weekly profile. So the entry areas are going to be 822, bottom of the daily profile, 830, bottom of the weekly profile, 716, bottom of the monthly profile. 716 only comes into play if we see it close below $8.30. Let me pull over my CDE charts out here. 
and see what they say. Here, let's look at the daily time frame. The daily time frame, what do we have out here? No other signals. Price is below red oscillator and change line. And as long as price remains below that, which is basically near the top of the profile, that 822 level, Jerry, that looks like where price is headed to. On a 30-minute time frame chart, what do we have here for this? We do have a TD9 count pattern that formed on the last bar. So that formed at 130. Here's what you're going to want to watch, 870. If you see price close below 870, the signal there is price is moving back to 824. If price can close above its oscillator and change line, that's at 883. That would then tell you that price is going to bounce up to the 9, 894, 9 or 906 area out here. But we don't have that signal as we speak just yet. But you do have a confirmed TD9 count, so you have to respect that. You respect it until you see it close below 870. So in this instance here, based upon what we looked at on the daily time frame, on the weekly profiles, monthly profiles, we're going to also suggest that you be patient and wait. And you use 822-ish as your target area for an entry point. And as price pulls back there, please uh, go ahead and get back to me, and we'll be happy to take a look at that. Uh, Dan... The man, Levitan, of course, I don't know if that's the case, but that's from what movie? That's right, uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Was that not a great movie or what? Absolutely great uh, movie out there. So Dan wants to take a look at Tesla. T-S-L-A is the ticker symbol out here. And Dan says, I bought Tesla because I thought it completed a TD9 count, but now I'm wondering, should I close the position or lower the stop? Okay, so let's go take a look at uh, Tesla out here trading below the bottom of its daily profile trading into a swing point dan that has volume of 89 million shares and you're at 31 million shares today so you're lighting the loafers but you haven't tested it so but price should or may be gunning for the bottom of that swing point and that'd be 539.49 so you're 561. price right now in tesla is also trading below the bottom of its weekly profile of course this doesn't matter until tomorrow but it's not exactly what you want to see on any at any point in time price trading below the bottom of of that which is at 575.58 if price closes below 575.58 you've got 523.96 that's the center of its monthly profile that becomes the target and the bottom of that swing point that we talked about from march 5th that is laying out at 539.49 so 539 523 area let's pull over our white background charts tesla on a daily basis did form a td9 count but there wasn't even a hiccup. Price just cruised right below that. That was the low of May 10th. And on that very following trading session when price got below that, that talked to us, that mentioned to you and I, a strong momentum move to the downside. Now, strong momentum move to the downside says we still have to take a look at the left-hand side of this chart. And so that swing point that we're referring to back on March 5th is also a hammer candle. So price is very likely headed there. If price were to close below that, then what you're looking at is a move to 433.01. It's next TD9 breakout level. I wish I could tell you right now what it was going to do. I can't. I don't. I, uh, I, I mean, I, well, I'm telling you, I'm sharing with you that it's likely to go test that March 5th swing point out there. Um... 30-minute chart, nothing looks good there. 130, nothing looks good there. 195, bar number 8. Um, nothing looks really good on the 15-minute chart out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Uh, I would make sure that you've got a stop in place uh, on this uh, trade. Don't know what your position size looked like. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. And to complete uh, Dan's question out here, he was really asking, should he adjust his stop? But I don't know where his stop is. Uh, I don't know what position sizing he was using, if it was just the typical 1% risk out there. Dan, the, the answer to your question would be, you know, where's that stop in relationship to where it would need to be moved to, which is the bottom of that hammer candle uh, from March 5th. So it'd have to be below 539.49 out there. And I don't know what that does, you know, to your uh you know, to your to your trade. Normally, I'll adjust a stop if 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 it's you won't have to move it that much. And again, I don't know what, whether it's that much on this trade or not out here. Or better yet, if I'm seeing some type of bottoming signal on the shorter term time frames, I would suggest okay, let's just. And we don't have that as we speak right now inside of Tesla. So I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Next question coming from uh, JT in uh, New York. JT, thanks for writing in. JT's question is about. What is it about? DPST. DPST is what? Direction shares ETF, uh, regular banks, bull. So I, is, is this, I don't know if this tracks the XLF, which might be better. I don't know if this, this is a three times. So it really makes it, I, I'll give you what I can on DPST, but really it is whatever, if this is an, if this tracks some type of indice, maybe somebody in the den knows. Is anybody in the den know what is the uh, underlying, I mean, I could spend time going to try to figure that out. I don't want to do that during, you know, during this valuable time during the show out here. But uh, you're asking, uh, would you buy, sell or hold? So I would really make my decision, not on this, so you're not in the position, so that's good. I would really make my decision based upon what's going on on the XLF. Uh, banks bull three times, yeah, but what indice, what do, what does it follow, Duff? You know, is it um, is it the XLF that it's really replicating here? Because I thought in the in the direction series was like FAS and FAS and what was the other one? I think those were the ones that were following the financials. So, I, I, again, I don't know what DPST is out here. Um, so, since, since uh, uh, yeah, I just don't know. All right, so I don't know. What are we going to do? We're going to just go take a look at the chart patterns out here for DPST. And uh, maybe uh, what you'll do, JT, is you'll figure that out and write into me. And then we can go take a look at the indice or ETF if there's one for it. So, with regard to DPST, price is below the bottom. Well, it's, it's, um, it's got wave number seven out here. So, that's a topping signal. Price is testing the bottom of its uh, daily profile. It's bounced up to the oscillator and change line. And you're asking buy, sell, or hold out here. Um, it's neutral. You've got a top, and price has held support. 
the buy point, if you're asking me where's a buy point on this, it would be in the 214.61, 217.38 level. Those are the TD9 breakout levels that have been tested and have held. So is this buy, sell, or hold? Well, if you have it, I'd say hold because it's neutral. I wouldn't buy it or I wouldn't sell it at this stage of the game because of that neutral signal. So I hope that that helps you out. Again, I think it would be, and I don't say I think it would be, it's regional banks. Uh, basis SMC, and that is what KBI or something like that. Duff, is that what it is? The KB, um, what's that index out there that deals with these small and, and uh, regional banks? If there is one, um, K, I, I, no, you don't know. Okay, so uh, that's that's really all I've got for you. Uh, the best that I can do for you out here, JT. So thanks so much for uh, writing in, and best of luck to you up in New York. The next question coming in from O oh, Susanna. Uh, I believe Susanna from uh, Canada out here. And Susanna said, would you please do your usual detailed analysis of Bitcoin and Mara? Uh, how far down is this going? I want to add to your position long. So let's go take a look at them. Let's start off with, uh, what do you want to start off with? Mara, M-A-R-A -A, is a ticker symbol. And that's Marathon Digital. And ooh, that does not look good. Uh, below the bottom of the daily, likely headed towards... Uh, the 1405 to 689 area. 1405 is the top of its weekly profile. 689 is the bottom of its weekly profile. Uh, let's take a look at the A to B equals CD downside pattern, which looks pretty nasty. Uh, the swing point that I would be using out here is from April 23rd. There was 21 million shares. And when price closed below that, it was 23 million shares. So now you've got a nasty confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. That pattern looks like this. And that's going to give us a price projection to consider. That price projection, the one-to-one -one level, takes you into the 1029 area, 1 to 1.272, takes you down to the $2.30 range out there. Okay, so that's what we see. Let's take a look at Stevie's white background charts. Well, turns out that today is going to be bar number eight of a TD9 count as it's cruising into its breakout support area. And that's at 1648. Now, in this case here, because that confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside, Susanna, you're not going to touch this until we actually see the TD9 count pattern form. And I mean, you're, you'd wait until bar the bar following bar number nine forms out here. At least at this stage of the game, that would be the recommendation. So you're going to watch 1648 because if price closes below that and negates its TD9 count, it's really headed lower. So there is the potential. There is the potential, but that potential won't really know. We won't know about that, I would say, until Monday sometime. So once you write back uh, during Monday's show, we'll take a look at it. Oh, thank you, Basil. So KRE is the regional bank. So we'll, we'll put that up on my screen out there uh, to maybe better help by uh, JT uh, uh, for that. So that that's great. I appreciate that. So on Mara, when we take a look at the daily, it just is it's looking, well, it's got potential, but again, you're going to watch that 1648 area. Your second question was about Bitcoin. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. I believe, I don't know what's going to pop up here when I try to do this because it's a June contract. I believe it's a June contract that should be uh, uh, trading out here. But we're going to take a look at daily, weekly, monthly profiles. Your question is, and it's trading out at 48.050, your questions were how low will this go? And it's below the bottom of its daily profile. This, these charts are not going to help us out. The charts that will are the white background charts. So let's go see what we know about Bitcoin, the June contract here for Bitcoin. And voila, you're asking how low will it go? It Maybe the, how low it will go is, is over. It's done with. What do you mean, jelly bean? Here's what I mean. 48, so this forms a roads momentum indicator top. Does that as a result of the bearish engulfing candle on April 16th and the close below the oscillator and change line? That would suggest to us that price is going to go test the breakout level. Well, that's 48,8120. It did that successfully, did that on April 26th and had a nice bounce, bounce to where? Resistance, the top of that daily profile. Now price is pulled all the way back to the support area. So Susanna, 48,120, is, and we're trading just slightly below it at 48,050. Are these $70 on a $48,000 instrument going to get my skirt in a tizzy? Absolutely not. And I don't wear skirts here, folks, but it's just an expression. And as we take, and if price closes below 48120 and really what I would say is it should, if it closes below 47955 the signal would be price wants to pull back to the 35130 area. But as we speak right now, if you are short because of the roads went an indicator top out here, or for whatever reason, this is where you would be covering. 
or you would at least go to the 30 minute chart or the short term charts to say, hey, is there any kind of a bottom here? Now, there's certainly an A to B equals CD that was formed with this nice hammer candle, and that uh, took place at about uh, 9.30 last evening. So I don't see a um, I don't see anything else. There's another A to B equals CD going on right now, and that may be confirmed as we come to the 2 o'clock time frame. So right now, your back is up against the wall if you're trading Bitcoin, but when I say it's up against the wall, you're really at support, breakout support. And again, no one, and I mean no one at TFNN, would have chosen 48120 is the breakout support. Please learn your nines, your TD nines. They will be so helpful. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got the Dow up 313, SP 33, NASDAQ is up uh, 48, Russell's up uh, five points out here. And uh, Basil was nice enough to uh, let us know that uh, KRE, uh, that is the SP Regional Banking ETF, may be the uh, ETF that. Um, uh, that I, I forget the DPST or something like that. That's uh, that's tracking out here. Unfortunately, I was getting my system set up to do the two o'clock update, and it's uh, slightly frozen right now, so I can't get to my white background charts. But let's just go with what we have here. 
Uh, and I read the question was buy, sell, or hold. You can see the resistance on the KRE up at the top of its uh, weekly profile at 7102. It's really neutral here. It's 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 a neutral signal. Now the daily is saying, hey, if you break below 67.27, you're headed to 65.28. But your question was buy, sell, or hold. So we're going to say we're going to still stick with that neutral signal as we speak right now. Wish those white background charts weren't frozen because we would go take a look at uh, something else that would be important. So we're not there. We haven't looked at gold. So let's go take a look at Goldilocks out here. Let's finish the show that way. Let's do it by looking at this set of charts out here. And this set of charts is going to give us, where is it? Gold, U.S. dollar, silver. Here we go. So now what we can see is, so gold, what gold did overnight and early this morning, it got back down basically to the bottom of the profile. We talked about that yesterday. We said you've got to watch this new profile that's forming because if price closed below 1830.20, the center of its bear structured profile, that'll signal that sellers should be able to push price back to 1805.90. It only got back to the low of 1808.40. You got to love that about three bucks difference. Now what we have is just a consolidation at with inside this profile out here. What it's waiting on, that is gold, it's waiting on the U.S. dollar, the very right-hand panel. U.S. dollar has a really nice bottom, a Four River Morning Star. It's above the top of its daily profile. But here's how important its descending trend line is. Mucho grande important out here. But if price can close above that, and right now we'll just simply call it 91 bucks out there, that will put pressure on gold. And then you'd be watching 1805. But if price can get... Uh, that's if price gets above that line, that descending trend line. Hey, folks, stay tuned for two more great hours. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien is take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Take care.